G'day folks, I'm Benno. This is The Shed. Well, I'm uh, still working on this uh, XJ900. You know, I've been sort of sitting here and looking at different things. Uh, I've cleaned up that subframe as much as I can clean it up. But it's really... Uh, the repairs were so bad on it, I just can't do it. So I'm going to have to uh, cut the subframe off. I'll show you why. Right. If you're looking here, with that uh, straight edge on it, where the blue line is, that's where the uh, frame was originally broken. That's from there, that should be a flat line uh, right to the end of the frame. And uh, we've got this huge gap. So this thing's, yeah, it's about as flat as the, um, what would you call it? About as flat as the, uh, the Himalayas, yes. Probably the Himalayas would be uh, a good analogy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to head off to the Steelies now, to the Steel Merchants, and um, I'm going to buy some one-inch tube, or 25.52 mil tube, and uh, I'm going to cut that subframe off. All right, so I'll be back. Catches. All right, guys, I'm back from the Steelies. Um, so what I've picked up, get that out of the road. What I've picked up is uh, some of this one inch. Um, this is um, one mil thicker in the uh, in the wall thickness than the original, the, the standard um, tubing that the frame was made from. What I've also got is this one, I can't remember what the size is off the top of my head, but that is outside dimension of the, I'll find an end that'll go in. The outside of the dimension is basically the same as the in, in, inner dimension. The idea is that when I cut the frame off, this will this section will go inside the original frame, weld that in place with a few holes uh, drilled through the frame so I can uh, do some tack welds on the top and will be welded here. Um, be the same deal, there'll be a few holes on this side, that'll slip over and get welded in in the same way. So that's the plan. Let's see if I can make it work out. reuse this this rear section here but with the repair that was done there's no sleeves um, yeah it was just pretty crap really fit inside of there yes it will look at that absolutely perfect okay so I'm able to get about 50 mil up into the um, into the original. I could probably smack that in a bit further. I'll cut two 200 mil sections off of this, which will go inside each side of that um, that subframe or into the main frame, and uh, weld it in and do the do. But you might be able to see I've cut into the subframe there, into the subframe, into the gusset. There was fractures in that gusset as well um, that someone's tried to repair. And the same on, on this side. So we'll clean that up, chamfer the edges. Two holes in the top, two holes in the top there so I can weld 
basically a bit of a spot weld hold that in place back further clean this up I'll weld this edge to the to the insert I'll leave a um, probably a five mil gap so that I can then weld back into the the replacement part I'm going to um, just mark this, uh, this is going to be the inner tube, but I'm going to mark that at 200 mil, or 20 centimetres. Now I'll actually mark that, I wanted to fill down, I'm going to mark that from either end, so I don't have a difference in the um, in the, um, in the, um, in the, uh, in, in the length from the cut. So I'll cut from either end, I'll still got a bit to play with here, so I'll stuff it up. my two inserts and a little bit left over for good measure and I'm just going to use I just got this little Azito um, grinder come linisher uh, just going to take the paint off of these and um, just take the dags off the edges Here we go. Broke the blade, the belt is on its way, so. Got it on camera. <laughs> Drill the holes uh, for, in the top for this. I'm just going to start with a um, uh, 1 8 inch bit. Just a little pilot hole. I'm only going to go to about a quarter inch, maybe. Battery's just about shot, oh, and that chuck's not real good either. Everyone is wearing out. There we go, there's the pilot. Alright, so here we go, I got the um get the Bosch power drill out. Whoops, wrong direction. So make short work of it. Um, where do I go? I might go up the size. I might go up to six mil with that. These holes are all there. That should sit in there about so far. And I'll drop a, a double weld on the top and then I'll weld around this edge. Same on this side. I want to try and get these inserted around about 100 mil. So I'll just put a mark on it. At 100 mil. At me 100 mil. Mum always said, don't eat, don't talk with your mouth full. No one can understand you. People have trouble understanding me at the best of times. Alright, so there, marked at 100 mil. I'll get my little dead blow hammer and a piece of wood. So I don't want to burr the ends of these as when I knock it in, because the other piece won't go on if I do. I'll just have to grind it down again. And then I forgot to turn the camera on. But what I've done, these are now, something I was going to show you was uh, that is a um, it's a dead blow hammer. I was going to show you how I use it. Make sure I'll grab me a little bit of wood and I'll just 
demonstrate. Forgot to turn the camera on as I was, to, as I was putting these in. So what I've done, I've used this dead blow hammer. I've also used a piece of wood on the end. I didn't want to burr up or swell the ends of, of these extent, these uh, inserts because uh, they'd make it hard to get the rest of the subframe on. I've managed to get them in around about 70 mil, uh, 75 mil maybe, uh, which is far enough to get into, so I can weld it through the holes that I've drilled, and then I'll also weld around the outsides of these, these two here. Uh, that's where we're at. I'll demonstrate, this is, this is how I put them in, so we get a little bit more out of it. No, that one's as far as it's going to go. A little bit more out of that one, so yeah, they're in. Uh, they're in as far as they're going to go, and I'm quite happy with that. Fits perfectly. So I haven't cut it yet. This will then slip over the top, and have a little gap there. Weld it in, and then do a fillet weld. And that'll be cut. Actually, might might make this a little bit longer than original, because uh, I because uh, I can. I actually want to put a tow bar on this thing too. So uh, then I'll have I'll have I'll have a uh, a basically a truss, I suppose, underneath here. Forgot to mention because I wanted to go for this pipe. I wanted to go for a slightly heavier. Uh, side wall or wall thickness so I've just measured it this wall thickness is 2.67 millimeters as opposed to okay so that's as opposed to the 1.91 millimeter uh, wall thickness of the original stuff so, yeah, they were pretty, pretty lightweight. I'm not, I don't, I'm not particularly worried about making things heavier. I don't mind a heavy bike. I'm not going for weight savings. I'm going for sheer rigidity and strength. So, need two, three hundred mil pieces of this, this pipe. Tube, which is probably called a tube because that's the dimensions. This is what we know. This is measure on this particular type of around. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do a measurement from either end because the other end of this piece of tube is a bit dicked up. So I've got it fairly cheap. Uh, hopefully, I won't cock it up. two pieces and they're, they're pretty close to even. But just clean them up, get back to you. Let's go. 
All right, folks, if you've managed to watch to the end, uh, good on you. Appreciate it. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the like button. Ring the bell. I'm Benno. This is The Shed. Catch you later.